Okay, so we got a bargain here. It's a moped. It's a. Uh, it is sort of given away, no cost. So it's a broken moped that is given away if if someone picks it up. It, and it says it probably can be fixed for the handy person. So it looks really nice on the photo. Probably is when when it was new, but. Anyway, this is the bargain you can make. It's an hour ago, and I contacted this. I saw this uh, ad for about when it had been out 40 minutes, so I immediately contacted him. And usually you don't get it because someone is faster, but this time I got a response. So we'll see if we can pick this up. I said I was available and could pick it up immediately and so on, and got to try to make it an easy, easy business for them. So I'll take you along uh, this journey and see if we end up with a moped or not. The brand. I can see it's, I think it says BTM here, and that is, I believe, a, a Korean company, but I, but I really don't know, but Baosian or something, Baosian motor company perhaps, I don't really know, so as far as this is, but Baosian is at least Korean, South Korean, so they usually make pretty good stuff, we'll see. So still waiting for him to get back when I can get it, and found this on the internet, looks like this one, it's a BTM, it's a 2009. So maybe this one, it has this box that the other one has. It's a four-stroke, unfortunately. I don't, I'm not really familiar with the four-stroke. And, uh, yeah. It hasn't gone long, this one, if it is this one. So, when was this sold? Let's see if it's the same registration. 757, okay. So the price for this one was 2,800 Swedish crown. That's about $280, so it's, it's pretty, it was really cheap on this site. Yeah. You can see here, 2800 so it's really cheap. Discontinued. Yeah. Well, we'll see. So, this one also says, does not start. Has been difficult to start in the past. Okay. Well, I'd, maybe I get my head, but we'll see if we can fix this up if we get it. Okay, so we're heading there, and uh, the guy's calling me up and saying that it's not at home. It's in an area uh, in the bad town of uh, my town. And uh, that, it, that it broke on the way home, something like that. And, and they, they had been to a motorcycle uh, repair shop and they couldn't fix it. Or they said it was too expensive to fix and it was too much trouble on it and so on. So this might be a real bad, bad example. It's not like on the picture. Anyway, let's see if it's still there or if it has been stolen. It's a pretty bad neighborhood. So we'll see. Okay, so we're here at... He said uh, it was, was going to be at the La Siesta. We have La Siesta here. So maybe it's just been stolen. We'll see if we can find it. We got the restaurant here. Can't find it yet. Okay, so I found it. It's there it's parked. So here we have it. So not in too bad condition. It looks pretty nice. Just wait the guy out. Looks in pretty decent shape, case. So, just made a ownership change, and uh, yeah, it's too uh, too heavy to uh, too big to get in the car, so I have to roll it at home. So I'm just walking here, trying to film, and yeah. So anyway, the guy said he had. Uh, they would uh, take uh, 4,500 4, Swedish crown. That's about $450. So it was too expensive to fix and the exhaust is gone and so on. Anyway, I don't think I have the stamina to work all the way home. So I park it somewhere. I got a lock with, the, with, the, with it. All for free everything. Fantastic. So finally at home. Now I gotta go and get the car again. But it's home at least. Next we'll check out its features. Okay. So this must be the the place where the previous owner turned it in. The bike it got so expensive to repair. By the way, the fuel meter he said didn't work either. Seems to be a lot of things that doesn't work. But uh, hey, it's a pretty fun project, right? Let's see if I can get it running. It was smelling fuel also. Anyway, I'm back here getting the car. I had I rolled the the moped 
home. So I'm back here in the trusty Toyota Starlet. So this must be the model BT49QT-12. Now I found out that Baosian is Chinese. <laughs> sorry, sorry guys. I'm learning. I'm a newbie. So checking this out and what do I find? A car, a car battery. Oops, there it went. A car battery. Where they just... Yeah, so you can go a long time on the electric starter. But then I also found, checking this, I was trying the starter motor and it sounded really bad. So I went here and this is just like, what is this? What has happened here? This is not good. So I reckon this goes to the shaft into the to the piston, the, you know, the the shaft that runs the piston, so this doesn't doesn't look good. So BT forty nine Q K Q T dash twelve. And here we have the exhaust pipe that is broken. And this this must be the e EGR. It just runs here in this cable here to the intake uh, muffler, I think you said, something like that. So I've removed uh, this and looks like this is loose. Sorry. Everything is loose here, so might not be so bad after all. The, the kid had uh, changed the the, the this belt and it probably uh, wasn't tight enough so I still got some hope okay so we still uh, just try to tighten this a bit and put it on the splines and now you can feel that it's it's pulling a piston so that's good this uh, this fan things cooling things has been a bit torn unfortunately maybe I can order a new one if I want but some of some of them are broken yeah but uh, yes that's good so let's check the oil as far as I can see it looks like it's too much oil right you can see the level there and so it's too much too much oil I really don't know how bad that is for these type of engines but yeah anyway I'm gonna replace it it's a 17 millimeter socket here it's Extremely dirty, I believe. Is this normal? Please comment. Another thing I found strange here. What's this? Need to replace this, I guess. What has happened here? Hmm. Strange. So this is the identification. 139 QMA motor and uh, some serial number let's check the other side yeah looks a bit worn also yeah we got the identification here to remove uh, this piece it's just four bolts on this one sometimes it's here but not on this one and then you just lift it out. I'm gonna use both hands. Okay, so what else can we find here? Well, I thought it was making noise here. It's, it's 
hardly attached and this one is missing I got that one but looks very loose everything I'm gonna remove this I'm gonna since the fuel meter doesn't work and uh, we'll see if we can find this cable and measure if it works or if we have to remove this the whole board the board the, the, I don't know what they call them copper we say in Swedish anyway when we remove that part we get a lot more space here much easier to work so what about the the battery compartment can we get access here now it was empty so the guy has uh, this is his cable and we got the fuse there at least but it's uh, damaged yeah can fix that and uh, here is the minus it's gone all the way down here instead of uh, yeah might, might be easier and here we have i thought the cd cdi would be here but it's not here so maybe it's one of these parts some electric stuff looks like we got some kind of big relay there or something for the electric starter maybe guessing here there's no fuse here from the battery and it's two small cables for that kind of amps that that battery can give so if this has shorted it would have burned and melted and so on okay so let's see how much weight we have 6.5 grams so I believe that's that must be the original some say you can go use 5 grams weights to get get better acceleration and hopefully keep the the, the top speed but this is original I believe 6.5 so for you who are new this is here and when when this is spinning fast the weights will flung out and I don't know if you can see it but they go upwards so when they were pushed at this it pushes this one at this and that means that it pushes against the pushes against the wall there and therefore uh, the driving uh, uh, rem will be pushed out since it will be tighter in the middle where there where this uh, yeah this uh, I forgot what they called yeah you know what I mean long one well it's too tight gotta do it by hand don't want to drop this one yeah at least we didn't spill too much I just got a big mess here so let's drain it so do we have any metal parts here no not really not much yeah so while this is, is draining, I removed the, this shape and they done uh, some kind of special thing here. So this, this screws, yeah, it's not important for you. But uh, it's, it's inside there and then you have this bolt and uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna, so this is the fuel reading meter. I don't think it's working, so it comes back here, it comes from here and uh, might have to pick it up and see if i can get it get some reading here probably some ohm resistance or something i can measure i'm also gonna replace the the gear oil this is the refill screw 
it's always interesting to see if it's filled up, if it will leak here, or if it's just dry. So it's dry there. So maybe this isn't the refill. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. So maybe it's it's good a good thing to do. Let's take the drain. I believe this is the drain. Yeah. I've already loosened that a bit. So let's see if we don't spill here. And I get grease again, of course. Hmm. It's a red, reddish one. Hmm. Not much, but it should be about 1.2 deciliter. So, if this is red, I don't know. Maybe they put wrong thing in some kind of automatic gear. So it's a nice thing to change it. It should be, according to the manual I have, 85V90 SIE. So, let's go and get that. Well, this drain, you can see the red color. Yeah, this is why you go through them. So I'm sort of interested what is behind this. Yes, we still got this piece. They call it the uh, Skorsten in Swedish. You can remove this, but then you might have to go up in size for the main fuel uh, screw. So I'm gonna keep it for now. This is soaked in some kind of oil, I guess. But it looks pretty okay. But it looks it looks pretty clean. So this is good. Leave it as that. It's good. It's really clean actually. So that's good. So while that is draining. I've loosened the screws here on on this carburetor top here. Uh, I'm curious how it looks under here. It should be a, a feather, I have. Yeah. And do we have a screw here? No, we do not. Sometimes it is uh, it is sort of uh, speed limited here with a screw, but not this one. So this membrane here, sometimes they say is broken. Well, it looks good to me. Just make sure that uh, this is nicely tucked in, so it is tight. I need something to pump it in, to use to pump, pump through the side there. So I'm emptying this one. I usually just use motor oil in this one to grease things up. And I'm gonna fill it up with this one, about 1.2 deciliter. So I put the back, the screw here and and I got some transmission oil in this one, A to B90, give them up. So I'm just gonna start pumping in here. And you can see it start, can't be too fast, it start dripping. If I pull this away now, it will probably leak out, but it's not filled full anyway. But it's a good thing to do it like this a couple of times, so you're sure that you'll fill it up. So now it's overflowing. So I fill this up half a liter with oil, with this oil, and start with a half liter. So I filled a half liter, and let's see if we can get the reading here. Yeah, it's starting to get wet, so let's fill it up some more and get it up to the top mark. So here you can see the old oil, I just uh, put it in this glass container, pretty black, right? So it was about time, feel good with, with good fresh oil, yeah. Okay, so I put it back together, and the next thing I'm going to check, I think, is uh, the speedometer, or spirometer, or whatever you say in English. Uh, it looks like terrible, it was a big bend there also, but I straightened it. Anyway, my idea is to cut this, and then turn the wheel, put it back here, and turn the wheel, and see if it is spinning it must be the cable at least that's the first thing but i also this could also be broken 
But I'm gonna cut this and then see how it turns out. So I cut it off using this saw blade. And, uh, and good news. Hope you can see this. It's turning. So I also found that the, the wire was completely off. So next step, I think will be remove this part. Or maybe this one. I found that uh, there's not much left screws here. They're all missing here. We just got one on that side. And uh, you don't buy those in bulk, right? So I just removed the front panel here. And it was lots of screws here, here, here. And uh, this one. And then we got some here in the back here also. And there and was one there. So pretty much. Anyway, I found some kind of alarm here, tucked away there, and the uh, next thing is removing this one. And uh, it's bolts, four bolts here, and then two bolts here. And then you have to press in the middle here to get, to get this all about, I believe that, at least. I haven't got it all up. I'll get back when I can use my both hands, sorry. So you can see the, this is the speedometer, speedometer. And I uh, also noticed that this one, with a bit of red on it, it's not connected to anything. It goes to the front light somehow, it maybe it's different in a different country, but this one is used. So I tuck this wire here. And note how the cable is going through this, this one. So we route it the same way. So I'll try to remove that cable. Can you see what I'm doing? No. Well, I unscrew that piece there. You see it? I unscrew it, just normal. So it's just a steel cable. Ah. Hard time focus. But you see it? Kind of. So I'll leave it there until I get the new one. So I can pull it the same cable way. All the way down here. And through that. So let's see. This is the... Fuel measuring, it goes down the tank. Okay, so I got it out, this piece. And uh, there should be some floating thing, I guess, here. Can't see that. Can you see rust in the inside? Yeah. Anyway, I tried to measure this one by doing this. I don't know if it's that way, but I unhooked it here and then I measured the, the resistance in ohm, but I couldn't get any any sensing. So I believe this is toast and I need to buy one, buy a new one. But I will check some YouTube and see if I can find something about it. Yep, there's the fuel fuel outlet. Got some kind of filter there. So when I measure these two left and the middle, middle one, and I put it in like this, I get a reading about 16, 16 kilo ohm, 16 kilo ohm. And when I pull it like this, I get about 35 ohms only, not kilo ohms, 35 ohms. So this is working, but the floating stuff isn't there, and it feels a bit, uh, should run lighter, I believe. Okay, so we're there, and what do we have? It's 50 ohm, something like that. Very low. Right? And let's see if I can make a turn this one. Well, you, okay, well, maybe you see it. So it's in that direction now. And let it stabilize. And what do we get? It's kilo ohm. Or it's 600 ohm. 500. No, it's mega ohm. You see? So. It's much higher. So it seems to be working, but uh, if I measure on this one, I do I have contact? Maybe I seem to always get this one. No matter how I turn this one, it's still the same. So I have connected a battery again, and I put this on a half or something like that, and uh, I turn on the ignition, and voila. We get some reading there. So if I move this one, let's see if we get some change. It goes down. 
And if I pull it all the way to the other side, we get a full tank. So, the bulb that's lifting it up is missing. And I've checked around, but I can't find it either. Maybe it's still in there, or they have emptied it out. Emptied it out. So next thing I sort of check is the brake pads. So I just loosen these two bolts and then, then you can remove this. Can you see? So we got some left there on the right one and the left one is, is pretty torn. It should be a, it's, it's out weird, but uh, it's a bit left. So I'll let it be and I don't have a, a home. But uh, might order so till next time. Now we know that status.